as you can see I've got a full car packed with all bits and pieces I'm off to study after near on four decades of a working life I'm uh, heading back to university and I'm on the road in Luxembourg or is it Belgium or am I in Holland or could it be France because I've traveled through all four of those countries already today and it's not even lunchtime on Sunday the reason being I'm heading north through Denmark but I wanted to take a moment just to understand what it feels like to travel across open borders in Europe I'll be going to Germany as well so that'll be five countries I'll travel through without being asked for a passport ID or seeing a border patrol and all of that born out of the Treaty of Rome born out of Maastricht in 1992 one of the towns I'll be having a look at today because of the optimism and the positivity and the sense of cooperation and partnership that grew up out of the Second World War, out of all the bloodshed of the Second World War. And yet today, two and a half months from the insanity of what the British call no deal Brexit, I find myself as a British citizen starting to contemplate the idea that those borders will now be closed to me, closed to me and millions of other British, of course which puts into perspective how it is that we got here and partly one of the reasons why I want to go and try and study. Try and make sense of a world that's closing in on itself, that's rejecting cooperation, that's rejecting partnership, that's rejecting the ability to share resources. Significant for me today because I want to go and visit a town called Aachen in, in Germany, just on the Belgian border, where my grandfather and grandmother and my dad fled Nazi Germany, escaping the occupation of Czechoslovakia as it was then, Bratislava, their hometown, working their way through Nazi Germany at great risk to their lives, and were offered sanctuary and freedom and opportunity in the United Kingdom in 1936 as Jewish refugees. And today that country is disappearing that country of open-mindedness, that country of refuge is disappearing through fear, through xenophobia, through nativism, through exceptionalism, through lost empire, but also through a bizarre nostalgia for World War II, a bizarre misplaced nostalgia for World War II, which is particularly significant in this part of Europe that I'm driving through right now. I don't know if I can make sense of it. Hopefully you'll come along with me on my journey and I'll try and join some of the dots. Maybe some of the dots can't be joined. I'll be going to visit Bergen-Belsen as well in northern Germany, site of one of the most infamous concentration camps where my grandparents and my, my father didn't end up. And for that, I owe my life. Let's see how the day works out and the next few days and the next few weeks and hopefully we can share some of the adventure together. So it's a bit of a grey day in a provincial town in the south of the Netherlands and I've travelled today from France to Luxembourg, Luxembourg to Belgium, Belgium to Holland and I've come to find out why and how it could be that the extremists and the hard right Tories could get so upset about something like this. This is the plaque that commemorates the Maastricht Treaty signed in the government building of Limburg behind me in this rather drab Dutch town and that is what boils them up. That's what nearly broke the Tory party in 92 and that's what's breaking the country today. If you can take yourself back to 1992, it was three years after the Berlin Wall, there was so much optimism and hope and sense of positivity about bringing countries together in Europe, except of course among the Conservatives and those that wanted to bash Europe, driven by some bizarre national sense of identity which drives them today and drives them towards the no deal Brexit that looks likely in two and a half months time. Anyway, that's it, we're out of here, that's Maastricht. We're on to Aachen. And as I was saying, it, it's hard to take yourself back to that time. That was three years after the collapse of the Berlin Wall. It was, it was a time of real optimism and a, and a sense of joining, joining the dots, joining the countries, joining people together, creating partnerships and opportunities and collaboration. And what I'm trying to understand now is how that 
has played out into this protectionism and this tribalism and this national identity and this, cell, this sense of separation that we seem obsessed with. Whether it's Trump, whether it's Modi, whether it's Bolsonaro, whether it's Erdogan, whether it's Orban, whether it's Prime Minister Boris Johnson, how does this work in terms of our trying to use our precious limited resources to the greater good? Because it basically doesn't. This is now about competing. This is no longer about collaborating. Anyway, on to Aachen and let's find out about the border that was for my grandparents one of the greatest challenges of their lives. So uh, welcome to the very elegant main railway station in the town of Aachen on the uh, German side of the German-Belgian border. And behind me you can see an intercity train headed to Brussels. So I have a reason for being here that's quite personal. This is where my grandparents, Ludwig and Margaret, came in 1936 with my 14 year old dad to escape Nazi Germany and get across to Belgium and one of the last ferries to the UK and I'm guessing they stood possibly on one of these platforms that being the Brussels train would have been in the right direction to Ostend I don't know the circumstances of how they got through here but I do know that Part of their story involves going to a bank apparently in Cologne to change the last of their Slovakian currency, their Czech currency as it was then, which had been devalued by the Nazis during the time that they had been getting out of the country and the bank teller, so the story goes, gave them German currency, Reichsmarks, out of his own pocket, without which they wouldn't have survived, they wouldn't have made it to here. Today is obviously a very different Germany and a very different train station. <laughs> Just to put a cherry on the cake, this train's going to Maastricht. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, Nigel Farage. So I've left Aachen. That was fascinating. Quite moving for me and really interesting to stand on the platform. And think about my grandparents and my dad in the 30s fleeing Germany and I I just been trying to trying to put together the pieces of of how it is that a country like Germany ended up in that situation and I don't want to make obvious comparisons but it does frighten me where the UK is going with this sense of xenophobia and closed minds and fear of immigration and fear of the other which is ultimately why my grandparents ended up on that platform the fear of the Jew the fear of immigrants taking something from the perceived indigenous race that was that was the story that Nazi Germany sold to its to, to its citizens and which ultimately they bought and it's not far off what the Brexiters are selling to the UK, this sense of patriotism, this sense of of treason, if you think any any other way. That's it, end of my day. Just stopped on the edge of this impressive wind turbine array in a field just outside Dusseldorf. But it's been great. I've uh, done my five countries without any checkpoints, as I promised you, all in the space of a day. Got to walk in the footsteps of uh, my grandparents and my dad in that train station in Aachen, which was poignant uh, and quite emotional, but particularly because of the fact that it goes without saying that the Germany they would have experienced would have been so contrasted and markedly different from the Germany that I've experienced today. And it's a blindingly obvious parallel to make but I'll make it anyway but the insanity of Brexit the catastrophe of Brexit that is turning the UK into the country that welcomed them into the country that will no longer be welcoming people like them it's just impossible to get your head around anyway I'm off to Denmark off to Iceland hope you come along with me for the ride